Alan poses an intriguing question. If every human on Earth suddenly disappeared, how long would it take for the last artificial light source to go dark? Let's start with the most straightforward scenario. The, major the majority of lights would fail quickly because the major power grids would collapse in a short time. Without humans, the demand for electricity would drop, yet appliances like fridges, air conditioners, and even lava lamps would continue consuming power. The fossil fuel plants that produce the bulk of the world's electricity rely on a constant fuel supply, and maintaining these supply chains depends heavily on human involvement. As coal and oil power plants began shutting down within hours, the remaining power sources would struggle to bear the added load. This kind of strain is challenging to manage even with human operators actively overseeing the process. The inevitable outcome would be a swift chain reaction of failures, plunging all major power grids into darkness. Nuclear reactors, however, operate differently. They don't depend on a continuous fuel supply. According to a reactor operator I consulted, a reactor core could potentially run in a low power mode for an extended period, almost indefinitely. For perspective, a cube of uranium contains roughly 6 million times the stored energy of an equally sized cube of coal. Despite this massive energy potential, most nuclear reactors would still shut down relatively quickly. Any malfunction would trigger an automatic shutdown, as every component in a reactor's control system is specifically designed to prioritize safety. Unfortunately, although there's enough fuel, most nuclear reactors wouldn't keep running for long. As soon as something went wrong, the core would go into automatic shutdown. Every part of a reactor control system is designed so that a failure causes it to rapidly shut down. This would happen quickly. Many things can trigger shutdown, but the most likely culprit would be the failure of the power grid. However, plenty of light comes from sources not tied to the major power grids. Let's take a look at a few of those, and when each one might turn off. Many remote communities, like those on far-flung islands, get their power from diesel generators. These can run until their tanks run out of fuel, which in most cases could be anywhere from days to months. Off-grid generating stations that don't need a human-provided fuel supply would be in better shape. Geothermal plants can run for a fair bit of time without human intervention. According to the maintenance schedule for the Svartsengi Island geothermal plant in Iceland, every six months the operators must change the gearbox oil and re-grease all electric motors and couplings. Without humans to perform these sorts of maintenance procedures, some plants might run for a few years, but they'd all succumb to corrosion eventually. Lights relying on wind power would last a bit longer. Wind turbines are designed so that they don't need constant maintenance, for the simple reason that there are a lot of them and they're a pain to climb. The Gedzer wind turbine in Denmark was installed in the late 1950s and it generated power for 11 years without maintenance. Modern turbines are typically rated to run for three years without servicing, and there are no doubt some which would run for decades, and one of them would probably have at least a status LED in it somewhere. Eventually, most of the wind turbines would be stopped by the same thing that would destroy the geothermal plants. Their gearboxes would seize up. Generators that convert falling water into electricity will also keep working. An operator at the Hoover Dam once said that if everyone walked out, the facility would continue to run on autopilot for several years. Though if the power grid is down, all that electricity would have nowhere to go. In the end, the dam would probably succumb to clogged intakes or the same kind of mechanical failure that hit the wind turbines and geothermal plants. Battery-powered lights wouldn't fare much better and will all be off in a few dozen years. Even without anything using their power, batteries eventually self-discharge. Some types last longer than others, but even batteries advertised as having long shelf lives typically only hold their charge for a decade or two. Solar power is probably the most promising candidate. There are many off-grid solar-powered buildings, weather stations, and other remote infrastructure around the world. Emergency call boxes, often found along the side of the road in remote locations, are frequently solar-powered. They usually have lights on them, which provide illumination every night. Like wind turbines, they're hard to service and they last for a long time. Solar panels will generally last as long as the electronics connected to them and as long as the panels are kept free of dust and debris. The wires and circuits will eventually succumb to corrosion, but solar panels in a dry place with well-built electronics could easily continue providing power for a century if they're kept free of dust by occasional breezes or rain on the exposed panels. If we follow a strict definition of lighting, solar-powered lights in remote locations could conceivably be the last surviving human light source. There's another unexpected contender for the last surviving light source, spent nuclear fuel. Unlike how it's often portrayed, radioactivity itself isn't typically visible. This is why warning signs are necessary around radioactive materials and waste. Its dangers aren't apparent to the naked eye. 
Historically, some watch dials were coated with radium to make them glow in the dark. However, the glow didn't actually come from the radioactivity of the radium itself. Instead, it was the phosphorescent paint applied over the radium that emitted light when irradiated. Once this paint degraded, the dials remained radioactive but ceased to glow. Yet, watch dials are far from the only radioactive sources of light. Radioactive particles traveling through certain materials such as water or glass can create light through a phenomenon akin to an optical sonic boom. This effect, known as Cherenkov radiation, produces the characteristic blue glow often seen in nuclear reactor cores. Some radioactive waste, such as cesium-137, is stabilized by melting it into glass, which cools into a solid block and is then encased in protective shielding for transport and storage. In total darkness, these glass blocks emit a faint blue glow due to Cherenkov radiation. With a half-life of 30 years, cesium-137 retains a fraction of its original radioactivity even centuries later, about 1% after 200 years. While the light's brightness diminishes over time, its distinctive blue hue remains unchanged since the glow depends on the energy of the decaying particles, not the total radiation level. And so, our answer becomes clear. Centuries from now, hidden deep within concrete vaults, the faint light from our most hazardous waste will still endure, marking one of humanity's last glowing legacies.